Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Alice Chang, endocrinologist. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Alice Chang, endocrinologist, a real doctor on the show, <laughs> yeah. to talk to us today about hypothyroidism. Okay, really important topic and surprisingly common in Very our society. Common. Okay, let's start at the beginning. What, what is it? What's a thyroid? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Let's start there. What is a thyroid? So the thyroid, first of all, uh, lives here in the neck, sort of where okay. a bow tie would typically be worn. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is a gland. It is an endocrine gland, so it makes hormones. And its job is essentially a factory. So okay. the thyroid is there to make the product. The product is thyroid hormone, known as T4 and T3. Now, T4 and T3 then circulate throughout the body and really impacts every system in some way, shape, or form. And when the thyroid is not working well, it's under-functioning. We call it hypo. So hypothyroidism is an under-functioning thyroid. So T4, T3 levels, too low. Okay. So what does that then mean for the person who has not enough T4, T3? I always describe it like a car running out of gas. Because T4, T3 kind of impacts metabolism and function of everything, uh, what the person then feels is really tired, yep. uh, they're more sleepy, they might feel really cold, uh, there may be weight gain, uh, maybe constipated, so uh, the, the skin is drier. So it's, it's like everything kind of slowing down. Even right? depression and trouble thinking, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So you're, you're sort of foggy brain and all of that because it's everything kind of slowing down. Now the thing about T4, T3, because it's such an essential hormone, uh, the half-life of it is long, meaning that it lasts a long time in the body. So even if your thyroid stopped working, it would take weeks and weeks and uh -huh. weeks for one to really start to see the effect. Okay. Um, so it's not like you know one day and then you're going to crash. It's over a long, long time that one would then experience symptoms of having an underactive thyroid. Okay. And so what is the signal, or this, this is what our, our body figures it out, what tells our thyroid to make more thyroid hormone? So, one of the beautiful things about endocrinology is it's all about feedback systems. It's so cool. I mm -hmm. enjoyed it. It's all about it feedback. School, so, sure. so, it's kind of like the, the thermostat temperature furnace kind of yeah. concept. So, with the thyroid, the, the, the driver is the pituitary, and I'm pointing sort of here, because <laughs> it's right through here. It's a pea-sized gland that's a, sort of the base of the brain, and it makes a ton of hormones. One of the hormones is called TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. Right. We also name our hormones very smartly. Yeah, so thyroid stimulating say. hormone stimulates the thyroid. Right. And therefore TSH goes to the thyroid and tells the factory, hey, make more T4, T3. Yeah, we should have done that, Brad. Like arm bone, right. leg bone. I right. Know. It's <laughs> like a lot smarter. <laughs> Humor that. Go huh. back in time. Yeah. And then the T4, T3 that then's made by the factory feeds back up to head office and mm -hmm. kind of says, okay, you know, there's enough. So then the TSH production turns down. So there's a nice feedback. Right. So when we're figuring out if someone has it, we do blood tests. Right. Mm -hmm. What do we measure? We measure the head office signal. Right. Oh. So if the TSH... So you don't x-ray the thyroid. No. I'm out. No. No x-rays <laughs> of the thyroid. Not a good idea. No. Okay. Generally, radiation to the thyroid, yeah. not a good idea. No, I got it down the thyroid. Okay, uh, sorry. So we measure the TSH. Right. And if you think about it, if the factory's not working, the head office is going to send lots of memos to the factory to make more. So TSH goes up. Uh -huh. The opposite, which we're not talking about, but hyperthyroidism, if the thyroid was making too much product, right. then the head office would stop sending memos and the TSH goes down. Right. So it's kind of the opposite, and that often confuses people because I'll tell them, case. hey, the TSH is high, your thyroid's low. They're like, well, that doesn't make sense. So you're placing lots of orders, you're just not filling them. Anybody can place the order. That's right. Filling them is the yeah. key. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's hypothyroidism, T3, T4. You say T4, T3 is funny because it goes three is asked before yeah. four. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> T4, T3 are down. Correct. And the way you detect it is because your TSH is up. Correct. And you've got the hypothyroid symptoms that we just talked about. And we, the fact that, that the thyroid hormone hangs around for a long time. So if there is a problem with your thyroid, you're not going to figure it out right away. These are symptoms that are going to happen over weeks, several weeks. Correct. And so you'd say, so diagnosis, physical exam, I guess physically you could feel a goiter potentially. Yeah. If it got really big, you could see it. Hang on, hang on. What are you talking about goiter? Yeah. So. What's that? What do you mean goiter? Oh, goiter. I'm sorry. Yeah. So a goiter, or when your thyroid gets large Correct. in response to abnormal signals, Correct. is a sign of hypothyroidism. So Correct. would you see that? Like, why do you get 
Why do you get swelling of the thyroid? Why do you get enlargement of the thyroid? So typically, when someone comes in, it's the symptoms that bring them in. Right. On mm -hmm. physical exam, uh, we may see a goiter large thyroid, and that's because, remember, head office is sending lots of orders, uh, so then it's thyroid-stimulating hormone. It's stimulating not only production, but it can also stimulate growth. Okay. So then one may have a goiter, uh, but then there's a lot of other physical exam stuff we may find, like the, the coldness of the hands or just general coldness, the dry skin. Uh, there's a really interesting one where the reflex uh, of the knee and that's, or the ankle is, is there's a delayed relaxation phase. That, that's sort Ooh. of an interesting one that you can show yeah, medical students and stuff when you can. Uh, nice. We love that stuff. <laughs> when, uh, when medical students come by. We don't see it often because you do have to have untreated hypothyroidism for some time okay. mm. to actually develop those physical signs. Ah, cool. So we've got the history, we've talked about the physical examination, which you just went through. And of course, the test, the main test is that blood test to look for TSH to see if that's elevated. So now the next thing we, you're probably wondering is, well, how do you treat it? Uh, so the, the other beauty about endocrinology is we can usually treat, maybe not cure, but treat the vast majority of what we see. And it's also a very simple principle. If you're missing something, let's give it back to you. And that's exactly what the treatment of hypothyroidism is. So if you're not making enough product from your factory, right. let me just give you the product. And we have T4. Okay which is levothyroxine, and the, the names you might know it by is Synthroid or Altroxin, and that is, a, that is T4, that is human T4. And the reason we give T4, and typically not T3, mm -hmm. is because the body is very smart. The body makes predominantly T4, and then you know my big toe will convert it to the biologically active T3 when it needs to. So right. tissues in the body can convert it as they need to. So therefore, it makes more sense to give the, the T4 and let your body change it to T3 when it needs to, where it needs to, as opposed to me assuming how much T3 you need and trying to give it to you in a pill form. So we typically prefer to replace with T4 as okay. opposed to T3. Safe to say the endocrine system is a lot smarter than the skeletal system. Sure. Well. <laughs> now, now you would say then when someone gets treated, the way to measure efficacy of treatment would be improvement of their symptoms as well as their blood work then? You yeah, would follow them so up. we actually follow the blood test quite a bit, or we rely on it quite a bit. And the reason is because the symptoms are so nonspecific. Right. All of us here have had tiredness, have <laughs> felt cold sometimes, have probably put on weight. Like, you know, like it's, yeah. there's a bazillion things that can cause all of those symptoms. So okay. symptoms are hard to go by. But the TSH, which is your own thermostat, is a very good marker of whether you're getting enough of the T4 you need. Okay. That's hypothyroidism. Yeah, just, just, just to go back quickly, just for one thing, who, who gets it? Why do, why do we get hypothyroidism? Right, so it is very common, okay. as you mentioned, and it's usually uh, something called autoimmune. So it's your own immune system that has made antibodies that have decided to attack your thyroid okay. and essentially make the factory not work anymore. Well, thanks uh, we, for that. Yeah, I know. Now, the, the beauty, though, is it's easy to... to to fix in that we can replace the product. We, we don't address the antibodies, we don't give you know immune suppressants right. or anything. It's not necessary because the treatment is quite simple and works very well. Right. But that's the most common cause. And we call that Hashimoto's thyroiditis, right? Correct, okay. correct, yeah. So right. it's an autoimmune thing. So it often can run in families. I mean, there are some other potential causes if someone had surgery to take it out or uh, they had radiation treatment to, to blow up the factory. Um, or uh, other forms of it, or, or but typically it's autoimmune. And then we do have some viewers in developing countries. Iodine deficiency is also a potential cause, just not commonly seen in North America. Is correct, that correct, correct. Not commonly seen uh, in North America, but but seen in certain parts of the world. So iodine deficiency can happen, and in those individuals, goiter is a big oh. uh, component of how one might present. Okay, that's wow. Cool. We feel so much more educated about hypothyroidism now. Yeah, okay. I have so many patients with hypothyroidism. <laughs> now I know what's going on. Thank you. And now you feel prepared to have a discussion with your family doctor if you are experiencing some of these symptoms to talk to them about it. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time. And thanks to Dr. Chang for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you.